Hi everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. If you are new here then click subscribe and you can check out my other social media. Today we're going to go through the evaluate exam style questions. So first of all it's thinking about what do we mean by evaluate in biology because it does mean different things for different subjects. So here we have the A-Level definition from the AQA exam board. So they state that students should use the information supplied within the question, as well as your own knowledge and understanding to consider evidence for and against when making a judgment. Now for A-Level, one difference compared to GCSE is that you don't then get a mark for giving your overall conclusion, which would be the judgment. It's just for providing evidence for and against. These questions are normally worth somewhere between four and six marks in the exam. And you don't actually have to give equal pieces of evidence for the for and the against. But if it was a four mark question, then three of those four marks would be the maximum you'd be allowed to have on either side for or against. So it doesn't have to be balanced, but you can't just provide evidence for or just against. And there's three key examples that I'm going to be going through, and that is evaluating the data, the method and the conclusion. And those are the key questions that you'd see. So for evaluate the method, I'm going to go through with you the general points to look out for. And that would be points to do with the sample size, whether there are repeats, the control or the control experiment, control variables, whether there's any bias and the duration of the experiment. So I've given here a method as an example, just to demonstrate how to identify some of those points. So first of all, sample size. We're told here that a team of scientists are investigating the effectiveness of four different influenza vaccines. And they had a total of 1,800 people, which were split into five groups. So 360 was our sample size. So you might be commenting that 360 isn't actually a massive sample size for a drug trial. So that would be going against in terms of evaluating the method, whether you trust it. The sample size is quite small. The next thing that we can see here is we're told that the fifth group was a control group or the control experiment. So they were given just a saline solution instead of one of the active um, drugs in the vaccine. So that would be an advantage because we do have a control experiment and that's useful because it means that any differences that we then see between each of these vaccines is due to the active ingredient rather than the placebo effect. Duration of the experiment. So they have given us information on the duration and um, they've said that the next year they're going to see how effective it is when they're exposed to the um, next year's influenza virus. Now, the things to consider, though, as well, that they haven't mentioned, I'm going to go through. So they haven't said anything about whether they've repeated this year on year. So you could have that as a negative. There's nothing there about the repeats. They also haven't stated anything about the people in each group. We know there's 360 of them, but we don't know. Are they male or female? Are they older or younger? And do they have any other previous health conditions which could affect how well the vaccine works for them? So that would be a negative. There's also no mention of whether the investigation was conducted with a blind or double blind trial. And this is when the blind trial is if the um, volunteers do not know whether they have the placebo which is the saline solution in this case, or one of the active vaccine jabs. And a double blind trial is where neither the volunteers or the doctors, or in this case the scientists, um, know who's got which, and therefore it avoids bias. So if you are asked to evaluate a method, these are some of the general points to look out for. If they have discussed it, you then need to decide whether they have got a good sample size, for example, have they repeated it enough times, um, and is it biased or not, and so on. Evaluate the data is more commonly asked than evaluate the method. And I'm just going to go through the general points first. 
So the beginning mark you will always have to state is the overall trend. And this would be evidence for the conclusion um, that you have. And in this example I've got, we can see the overall trend is a positive correlation. And in this example, the overall trend is a difference. So we can see that the MV plus MMR group is lower than the MMR only group. So we can see that MMR only has a higher mean amount of antibodies. So when you are evaluating the data, that will always be mark number one for stating the overall trend. And I've put down here as a reminder, you should always be using data as evidence for your points. Now, for a positive correlation, you won't necessarily be using data, but you should be using the labels on the two axes. So we'd be saying there's a positive correlation between pH and the number of water beetle species. Okay, general point number two is, is there any overlap in the data? And I've highlighted this on the scatter graph so you can see it more clearly, because in this case, the answer is yes. There is an overlap in the data because for the number of water beetles at 16, we can see we have um, multiple data points for the different pHs. And if we have a look here for the same pH, we have a variation in the different number of beetles. And those overlaps go against the positive correlation. Now on this one here, any overlap in the data, we can't actually see this um, particularly clearly without standard deviation. So for this, any overlap in data, for a bar chart, you'd want standard deviation bars to be able to comment on that. The third general point that you should always be looking out for is comparing your control group to your test group. Now, neither of these two examples actually show the control experiment, so I can't demonstrate it here. But what we could look at is looking at the lakes without fish compared to the lakes with fish. And at the lower pHs, there doesn't look like there is any difference in the number of water beetles at those different pHs, because that's actually not showing any particular pattern at all. You might also comment on the fact that the lakes with fish have data points from pH 6 up to 7.5, whereas lakes without fish don't. So the last general thing is, was there a statistic used? And if so, what does it use? Now in these two cases, there isn't a statistic. Now even if there is not a statistic, you still mention it, because what we could then say is, there is a positive correlation, however, the statistic Spearman's rank or the correlation coefficient was not conducted and therefore we do not know if it is a significant positive correlation. Same idea here, we don't have any information as to whether a statistic was used, so that would mean we'd be able to say, although there is a higher mean amount of antibodies, without a statistic we do not know if that is significantly higher. So those are the general points, but for each question, you would have to pick out some specific points to do with the graph or the data in a table that you do have. For example, the one that I said earlier about the fact that we only have data points for the higher pHs for one of the lakes. But you could also say that we only have five data points, or actually six, which isn't really enough to be um, confident in your positive correlation. So the final option is a combination of the two we've already looked at. Evaluate the conclusion means consider both the method that was used to collect the data and the data itself to come to a judgment. So that could be evaluate the conclusion or they might ask you, do you trust the conclusion? So you need to consider both of those aspects unless in some cases the question might say evaluate the conclusion using only the data, in which case you'd revert back to evaluate the data. The other thing I want to emphasize is in these questions, you need to use all the information you have been provided in the question. So all of the written information about the method and all of the data in tables or graphs as well. And sometimes that might be spread across subsections of the questions. For example, you have question one, part A, part B, part C, part D, 
And the final bit, evaluate the conclusion, might be part 1e. But some of the answers might be all the way back at the beginning, which could even be on the previous page. So if you're asked to use all the information, make sure you look back across the whole question so that you haven't missed any points. So that is it for evaluating the question. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up.